In the holy name of Jesus, amen. A friend of mine had this quote under his senior picture in his yearbook. All great men are dead, and I'm not feeling so well myself. You can laugh, it's okay. At one time or another, we've all thought that the world revolves around us, or at least we've acted like it. We tend to want to know how things are going to affect us. What does this new law mean for my business? How is this road construction going to impact my commute? Why do I have to care what's going on in other parts of the world when it doesn't affect me? All too often, when it comes to discussing things and making decisions, we place ourselves right in the middle as if we are the only one that matters. If we're not careful, we can do this with our faith as well. I often hear other pastors saying, we need to make the Christian faith relevant to what's going on in the world today. Now, there may be some truth to that, but often it becomes clear that what is really being said is, we need to prove how the Christian faith affects people in the midst of their daily lives or they won't buy in. There can be the assumption that the Christian faith is a commodity to be sold, and we must prove that it's worth to a person in order for it to be relevant. The assumption here is that we need to prove that Christianity works, and that somehow it will prove, improve someone's personal well-being. If we're not careful, we can mold Christianity into believing it's all about me and what I want. But this is a false assumption. For the heart of the Christian faith is never about us. It's all about Jesus. And he is always at the center of what we believe, teach, and confess. Let's listen to our gospel lesson for this morning. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. If we just stopped here, some of you might raise your eyebrows and say, what? I don't like this Jesus. And those of you who like to fight might be saying, preach it, pastor. Immediately, we see division. And then Jesus goes on to say, For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, for those of you who don't have a great relationship with your family, you might feel justified in keeping your distance from your family members. They might rejoice and say, boy, this Jesus is great. However, those who have good relationships with their families, Jesus' words this morning aren't exactly all that comforting. They might say, Jesus, don't you want me to love my wife and my kids with all my heart? How can you expect me to choose between you and my family? If Christianity is all about me and what I want, then I ultimately have no need for Jesus. If we embrace Christianity only to make our day-to-day -day lives better on this earth and only want the parts that bring happiness joy, and peace. Then we put ourselves above our master, Jesus. And if I'm only embracing Christianity because it works for me, then logically, if Christianity stops working for me, and I don't like what Jesus says, then I can disregard it and stop adhering to it. After all, 
it's all about me. This is not why Christianity is to be followed. This is not why Jesus went to the cross. Christianity is not to be followed because it always brings us comfort and peace. We are Christians and follow Jesus' teaching because his teachings are true, good, and right. And Christianity is not followed because it's all about me. Rather, Christianity is to be followed because it's all about Jesus. And it is through Jesus and through Jesus alone that we finally find true peace, joy, happiness, and meaning. I cannot get those things as long as I'm focused on myself. For they only come through the painful death and resurrection of Jesus. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. This statement can only make sense from the perspective of what Christ has done for us. For oftentimes, our family members become the center of our lives. We seek to make our family members happy. We seek their approval. We want them to love us. And we oftentimes will do anything we can to stay in their good graces, even if it means denying Jesus. But when Jesus becomes at the center of our lives, we don't stop loving our families. It's actually quite the opposite. We continue to love them, but we no longer love them more than Jesus. When Christ is at the center of our lives, we're reminded that these relationships are extremely important, but they're only temporary. When Jesus is at the center of our lives, we can speak the truth openly and honestly in love and be faithful in our witness, even when it's hard and our family and friends challenge us. You see, our gospel lesson does not mean that we stop loving our family. In fact, when we understand what Jesus is teaching us, we grow to love our families and those around us even more because we know that Christ died for us when we were unlovable and because of what he has done and the example that he has set for us, we know that we can love our parents, spouses, our in-laws and our children, even when they are unlovable. When Jesus is at the center of our lives, yes, there may be division, but we are moved to love one another in spite of how we may feel. So here's your one takeaway. Jesus reminds us there's only one that can be our top priority in our lives. And that priority is not us, our family, our kids, or our friends. Our number one priority should always be our relationship with the one and only triune God. For without him and the sacrifices that he has made for us, we would be nothing. Jesus never promises that life will be easy. And Jesus does not promise peace this side of heaven. But for us faithful, a great and glorious reward awaits us. For we are reminded Christianity isn't about us and what we have done to accomplish our salvation. It's all about Jesus all the time. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.